this demonstration we're going to look at installing server core so i've come over to the machine where i'm going to install server core and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to power up this machine by clicking my start button and what we can see is now loading the files from the dvd so allow this to run through and what we'll do is we'll just pause the demo at this point and just return back once the load has completed and the first thing we're going to do here is we're just going to select our regional settings. So we've got United States currently, language to install, and time and currency format. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to go for United Kingdom, and we're happy with the keyboard or input method to be United Kingdom. So this point here, we'll now select Next. Then what we'll do is we'll select Install Now. And you can see that we've been returned back with some options. So what we've got is we've got Windows Server 2016 standard evaluation. In my case here, this is Server Core. If I wanted to install Windows with the GUI, I'd go for the desktop experience. But we are going to install Server Core. So what we'll do is we'll leave it as the standard evaluation and select Next. Then what we'll do is I will accept the license terms and select Next. We're just going to go for the custom install. So install Windows only. Now I'm going to install Windows onto this disk, so we'll select Next. And as we can see, it's now copying the Windows files. To get the files ready for installation, it's going to run through installing features, installing updates, and finishing up. Now, this won't be very exciting to watch, so at this point here, what we'll do is we'll just pause the demonstration and return back once the installation is complete. As we can see, the files have now installed, so it's just going to do a restart. So again, we'll just pause the demonstration and return back once the restart is complete, and then we'll configure Windows Server Core. So as you can see, it's now popped up. So what we have here is the user's password must be changed before signing in. So we'll just select OK. We'll just type in our new password and confirm our new password. And now we've done that, we'll just hit the Enter key. And as we can see, the password has now been changed, so we'll just select OK. And what it's now doing is now logging me in with that new password. And we're now sat at the command prompt. As part of the installation of this server core installation, what we've got is we've got a random computer name will have been generated. And also what we'll have as well is we'll have an IP address from a DHCP server. So one of the things we want to do is we want to set up a valid IP address and also as well a valid computer name. So to do that, what we have is we have a utility called sconfig. So if we just type in sconfig. And if we then just hit return. And that then takes us into the sconfig utility. So the first thing we're going to do at this point here is we're just going to change the computer name. So what we'll do is we'll just hit number two. And then what we'll do is we'll enter our new computer name to be lon-svr and then six. And we'll hit return. Now it's telling us we have to do a restart. So we'll do the restart now. So we'll say yes. And again, what we'll do is we'll just pause the demonstration and return back once the reboot is complete. And we'll just log back in again. And we'll go back into our sconfig utility. And the next thing we'll do is we'll set up the IP settings. So we'll hit number 8. And that will then take us into the network settings. And the first thing we'll do at this point here is we'll just go for index 1. And then what we'll do is we'll change some of these settings. And we'll start with the network adapter address. So number 1. And then what we'll do is we'll go for a static IP address. And then we'll just type in the new IP address. And I'm going to set that to 172.16.0.26. Then we need to put in the subnet mask. Now I'm, what we're going to do is we're going to modify this as well. So we'll go for 255.255.0.0. And then we need to put in our default gateway. Which I'm going to set to 172.16.0.1. Then what we'll do is we'll set up our DNS server which will be 172.16.0.1. Click our OK button. We're not going to bother with an alternate DNS server, so we'll hit Enter, and then we'll return back to the main menu. Next thing we'll do is we'll add it to our Active Directory domain, so we'll go for Option 1, Domain Workgroup. Then what we'll do is we'll join a domain. Then what we'll do is we'll put in the name of the domain to join. I'm going to join a datum.com and hit Enter. It's asking me for an authorised domain user. I'm going to use a datum backslash administrator. Then I just need to enter the password. And then hit the enter key. And the final step will just be to do a reboot. And when the server reboots, it will then be joined to the datum.com domain. And that's the end of this demonstration. Thank you.